Hey, thanks for watching. In this video, I'll try to explain how to use a couple of scripts I made to create a time intelligence calculation group first, and then another calculation group to show a dynamic label to identify the different calculations but using the actual years that it refers to. So not just like previous year, but actually which year is it and so on. But we'll get to it. Shall we do it? Alrighty. So here you can see I'm using this well-known counter model. And here I have next to nothing. No? So I have just you know, self amount, month, uh, year filter and the same values as a, you know as a line. And we want to do some, you know, time calculations, and we don't want to create bandit measures. So, what shall we do? We shall make a calculation. And to do that, uh, we'll try to use my script. So, if you dealt with uh, calculation groups, you know that it's a good practice to limit the scope of your calculation group. That means limiting the measures it affects. Otherwise, all kinds of mess happen. So, really want to stick with that. And we will do that in this case as well. So, here you see that the first variable that you need to set up is all these first ones are like, you know, parameters to, for the script. You need to really uh, say, okay, what are the measures that you want to use? And the good thing is that this script takes an approach which will make it easy to change later. If you want to add another measure or remove a measure from the affected list, so you don't have to change manually each of the calculation items, which I think is a good thing. So anyway, but we need to at least include one. Yeah, and we have two possibilities. We can just select it from the object model. So here, wait, what is it here? Cell amount. I could just select that, or I also could type it here. So if you want to add many measures from different tables. Selecting is not really a good one. Well, you cannot really do it. So you can just you know, type the names of all the measures, like here. You see, there's an the example how you would do it. But anyway, we'll just select our sales amount, and we can just forget about this part. And the rest of the measure, the uh, rest of the variables are just you know um, naming things. So here's the new calculation group name. That's the column of the calculation group. So far, I'll just leave it as it is. Here, we'll probably have to change it. This is, the, it was uh, developed using this model, so everything just fits nicely. The fact table name, it's sales. And then, um, wait, wait, okay. And then, very important, um, what is the order date? Uh, what is the, the date that we should use from that table? This is important in order to uh, avoid many of the usual mishaps that uh, occur when you are doing time calculation. You know? So if you say, come on, Bernard, you're making it too difficult, just go to taxpatterns.com and you'll see that um, if you just go and say, okay, same period last year to get the last year value, and this sounds good until you realize that then you'll have values for one year into the future for that menu because one year into the future you do have last year values but you don't want to use them right you just want to have last year values when you have actual values right so then is where this count will come into effect so here is like okay my fact table goes to that date so don't go beyond that in creating you know last year values and so on <coughs> what else so to refer back and forth, we need the date table name, which is date in this case, and the date table column name. No? So what is the column that contains the date, which is date, and then for the dynamic labels, since uh, we're doing basically um, year over year and stuff like that, we we'll just need the calendar year column. So where is the year stored? So it knows uh, where to look for it, and then. This is a this is a measure and a column that uh, are used in the definitions of uh, DAXPanels.com. So we'll just recreate it here, and we'll just use the, the exact same names that they use. Uh, these are like you know technical ones, so uh, that's why they don't have spacing, and they'll probably be hidden as well. Now here's when uh, this is a bit maybe not so um, 
I've seen it in other places. I don't know, I haven't seen it. So anyway, as I was telling you, normally you have to you know, establish a number of measures that should be affected. And many of the calculation items to start with, you know, if a selected measure is this and this and this and this, do this, otherwise selected measure, right? But if you have like say, you know, you know, 10 calculation items and you decide that you need a new measure to be effective, then you'll have to go through all the, three, the 10 calculation items and put it there. Maybe you did something with a format string as well. So in that case, you'll have to go also to the a formatting expression and change it there, so that's like 20 changes. Okay, so what I did, I don't know if it's good or not, but um, I decided to create a calculate table inside uh, Power BI, which will be just the list of measure, uh, the name, the measure names. Yeah, so it's like all the measure names, one bottom, just one column. So then I'll take just the selected measure name and see if it's in that list. If it's in that list, it affects. Otherwise, it does not. Okay. Okay. Maybe the bad thing about it is that you'll have to enable unsupported actions on the Power BI model. Yeah, because uh, creating calculated tables is not one of them, but it's difficult to break, so in my opinion, because I mean it's an unconnected table. Uh, it's just creating brand new. Anyway, no warranty. Save your work. Give it a try. Okay. You can also create it by hand, you just comment out that part if you want, and just go and create it by hand in, in Power BI. That should work as well. Anyway, so, um, so this is uh, the name of the table and the name of the column that we will be creating. And now, here we have um, a couple measures that will generate these dynamic levels that I was telling you about at the beginning. Yeah? And, um, I have like two flavors of those. So one is just the value of the measure will be, you know, this dynamic label. And the other one does the same, but it's a measure which has zero value and then the label comes as a format string. This may open some different, uh, you know, applications. And um, that's why they're both there. So you can use the one you fit to your use case. And now finally, at the end, there's something that maybe you don't want to change. It's, it's uh, some special character that we'll use in the, actually in the second script to, to protect some changes that we'll do in the format string. So that when this calculation group goes there, it doesn't break anything. Okay, so we will go slowly. That way. Anyway, here is all the configuration that you need to do. You see, most of them are just naming and deciding which measure you want from the start to be in the selected group. You need to at least specify one. And once you're done with that, it's just, you know, clicking play. Very easy. Boom, done. Okay, where is it? Here, you see it? We have our calculation group with the measures and we even have the calculated table and so on so let's have a look what shall we look first okay here for example let's have a look at the, uh, the year over year how does it look like so we'll go to expression editor and we'll see here you select the measure name in values of this column yeah if that's true, then, you know, it follows very closely the tax parent outcome definition. So value for current period, this is selected measure, value for previous period, this is just it, it show value for days, and so on. Okay? And then, here it does another thing that if selected measure is a label as value measure, the one I was telling you about, then it does all the things, but it returns you know, the selected value for the calendar year column, right? So this is the previous year, then it goes, you know, one year and returns the year that was then. And well, at the end, it takes both years to say, okay, so this year versus previous year, but you know, with the actual year values there, which makes it much easier to 
understand. So you don't have to go to the all the years license back and forth. Okay, then previous years one. You know. I mean, most of us maybe can do that. But all these data visualization things, the least effort is the winning solution, and it's cool. I know. So anyway, this seems to be working. And then uh, these are just, you know. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, here I forgot. There is one thing we need to change later. Here, since we just really want a string, I'll change the default value of the measure to a string because otherwise, um, Power BI doesn't allow it to use it as a title of a chart, for instance, and we might want to do that later on this video. So anyway, and here we want to have a look at what is the preview data, what is our table. Okay, measure, so there. Maybe because I haven't saved it yet. Okay, so we'll just save it back to the model. See what happens. Refresh now. Okay, we have our time intelligence. You see the other one is not visible, but it's there. We can go and have a look. Here, you see the cells amount. So, in case you wanted to, okay, I don't know, you have a, a total cost or whatever, you just can go there and put a comma and your name in, in double quotes. Then it will start working automatically for all of the coordination items to your new measure but for for everything also for um, tax uh, for um, format string as well okay so let's see what we can do with this calculation group now for our table for instance we can just go and grab our time calculation and put it into the colors boom we have all these beautiful calculations you see, we have the, the percent is already set up, and otherwise it keeps, you know, the original formatting. And uh, and we can, of course, use it also as slicer. We'll put it here. Okay. And um, okay, so if we select, you know. Year to date, sorry. Here we have the year to date of it. Maybe here is nice to see it all, right? So we just let me remove the interaction from here to here. Okay, so it will only affect the chart. But we want to see really what is being shown at this point, yeah? Because otherwise it's not very clear. So what we'll do is um use our measure as a title i mean we could just put you know a kpi card and put it on top but we don't even need to do that we can just go to the title and select effects and select wait is it working oh ah, yeah here it is and then say label Label as value measure. Okay. Boom. There we are. Okay. So I'm selecting 2008 and it's versus 2007. This is the change. Okay, good. If I change the year, of course, I'm not sure if there's value there. No, there's not. Sorry about that. Here, 2009 versus 2008, we can do it. Okay. So far, so good. This is only with one screen. Say, yeah, Bernard, but you know, I want to show current year and previous year. Can we do that? Well, of course we can, but uh, our title is gone. Okay, so I had the small problems where we were. We were deciding that, okay, this is nice, but we want to be able to show, you know, two lines at the same time and still got have our dynamic labels. So, of course, we cannot have them in the title. It wouldn't make any sense. I mean, which is which? You don't know. We cannot have them here with the legend because it's not really a column. 
if you want it to be a column, you need a calculated table, and uh, well, you can do it, but it's like a lot of work and resources to do something that is not so crucial. I mean, you can do it if you have strong you know, performance problems because there's so much calculation going on. That happened to me. Calculation, calculated table did the trick. There is a blog post that I did about it. Go read it if you have this problem. <laughs> Otherwise, just stick with me. And uh, we'll do it as a, you know, with a measure. And what we'll try to do is to, you know, to hide all these uh, labels and just use the last one to put this dynamic label there. And it will look very clear. This line is 2008, this line is 2009. Okay, something like that. So how we do that? Okay, we go again back to Chatter Editor. And here we have another script, okay? Here the important thing is to be coherent with the first script that we run because there's many names that need to match. Not this first one, which are just you know for the new calculation group. But then uh, you know we have the affected measures, the measure, the time intelligence group, the calendar date column, and the measure. And this is the flag expression, so that's from the original one. And we'll see how it's used. Okay, so we just run this. Come on. Okay, beautiful. Here it is. So, gonna have a small look at here. Uh, of course, in the selected measure, there's no change. We don't want to change the value of anything. We just want to change the form of string expression. And here is where the thing is going on. So, if it's one of those measures, not an idea, not, not, not any other. So we do the same thing. So we are now looking at all the dates that are included in the visual. So we're using this all selected. We are see, we are going to this shadow filter thing to see all the dates that reach the visual. And then we check the dates that we have in our filter scope. So in the, for each for a point, for instance, what's the next date that this point is saying? And if they match, that means we are in the last point. And then we want to get the value of that measure. Okay? This has some implications. Yeah? But anyway, um, here we're putting that flag thing, and then we have all those formatting strings for positive, negative, zeros, and text, which is this exact thing, you know, surrounded by double, double quotes, yeah, so that inside the format string, they remain with just double quotes, but inside the string, so that's why there's so many quotes going on. Okay, so, okay, very beautiful, Brian, but can you just show us how it works? Yes, of course. You said it. And we go back to Power BI, where we have table. Okay, and now we just go to the chart and we apply this calculation group at the visual level. So we open filter pane, select it, okay, and we'll bring it here. And come on, boom, it works. Okay, and you'll see that it also works well with percentage. And that's way more difficult than you would imagine. Yeah? And uh, even when the value is negative, well, we don't see it right here because I, I kill the axis, but um, there's no negative sign appearing here. Read the blog, you'll see <laughs> what I'm talking about. But anyway, you can see that now it works fine. But there's a mystery remaining. Yeah. The thing is, when I select the both percentage ones, where is it? It's coming. Okay, you see? This one has one label. I don't know why. And um, the thing about the flag, maybe, I don't know, it, it's easier if you read the blood, but anyway, we, we, 
If we go back very quickly to Tabular Editor, we realize that for our format string, we need the value of the measure, the dynamic uh, measure thing. Right? So we need to be in the scope of the time calculation calculator. Yeah, because otherwise mm, this will be not showing anything. So that means that the time calculation calculator needs to be applied first and then this one. Yeah. You say, well, but it just worked. You did it well because the script has it already. If you look carefully at the script, here it creates a new group, but then it says, well, if the level group precedence is bigger than the time group precedence, then it swaps the precedence between the two. And in this way, this works. But then we have another problem, which is that we have our beautiful label calculation group, and it sets a format string. But then what happens? If you go to your time calculation, wait, time intelligence, yes, calculation item, and you go to one of those percentage ones, and you go to the format string expression. Normally, you would have it that it just sets this format string, right? But here it says, okay, be careful. If you find the flag inside the string, yeah, then don't do anything. Just keep the format string as it is. If you don't find it, then if this other calculation group is not doing anything, then put the percentage. So we're using this flag to say, be careful, don't break it, I already made this calculation string for you. Calculation, not format strings, right? So, because this format string is applied later, but then sometimes you don't want it to apply. So, we need like some sign, and, and this, if you don't know, this is this, this zero with unit code character. So it's like it's there, but it's not. And you can use it for these sort of things. Also for sorting, people use it. So you, you'll see this in several tutorials. So anyway, this is why we're using that. So, and this is why I'm adding this thing at the very beginning of my format string. So I make sure that it's always there, even if the rest is blank. Uh, because this will be blank for many points, but this unicorn character will be there. And that is beautiful. I tried putting this unit chart together with result, doesn't work. Uh, don't, ask me, don't, don't, don't ask me why. But if you put it here, it works fine. Also, it's very important that you complete all four parts of the format string. Try to frame wasn't working either. Okay, the more you know, right? So, anyway, I hope you like this. I think it's cool. I might use it, then it's very generic, you can, anytime you have, that you have a calculation, time calculation, you can use this. And maybe you'll say, well, nah, but where are my data points, I want my data points, uh, then you can just create a report page tooltip, which is much powerful than the regular one, and show there anything you want there. Okay? <laughs> How does this sound? Okay, thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs> and we'll enable it. Okay, are we good? Alrighty. So, create the group. Oh, okay. 